Hello, I'm Colin Studebaker, the National Sales Manager for DB Technologies, and I'm here with John B. Anthony Company to show you the Ingenia system and how we set it up. We're going to ground stack two Ingenia 2s, and the way that we'll do this is we'll use this ground stack adapter, which is the GSA-IG, and you are able to use it essentially with any of our subs or really any sub that has an M20 thread. The way that it works is this ground stack <coughs> adapter secures to the sub sits in place and then you use this included accessory which is the DS2S. So this secures it to the sub and then the next step is make sure that these locking pins are all pulled out. That allows you to set the speaker directly on top of the mini pole here. That sits down and locks into place and then you lock these pins into the Ingenia as these pins lock directly into the side of the box and so now it's secure. We could actually stack a, a second Ingenia on top here so you can pair two of any types of Ingenia together and the reason you, you would do that is you're now going to get more output and more throw capability. So let's grab another Ingenia too. Take it out of the carrying case. And it'll actually go on upside down. And I'll explain the reason that is in a second. So these just line right into place here. So there's tracks that guide them into place. And then we have these link brackets, which are the LPIG. And these secure the two boxes together. You squeeze it, and it allows you to attach them to both Ingenia's and then it releases and now these are locked together. Ingenia 2 over a single sub. We also have the sub 15H and 18H which are other subs that you would commonly use with the Ingenia. They have the M20 thread which allows you to use the GSA-IG to ground stack and then again our link brackets and then keep in mind these are all also flyable. And the reason why these are upside down is you have your two, in this case this is Ingenia 2, so you have an 8 inch low frequency driver, 8 inch low frequency driver, and then a single 1 inch exit compression driver. When you pair two together, you want the high frequency sections coupling together. So by this one being upside down, now you have your high frequency section all right here. You can also steer the high uh, band pass, the high frequency band pass upwards or downwards by 10 degrees because right now a single box is, is vertically asymmetric so it's throwing forward and downward. So this one's kind of doing that and this one's kind of doing that. When you pair it together it's now vertically symmetric and then you can use the DSP to steer this upwards or downwards by 10 degrees. And There's two ways to do that. You can either do it on the back of the box on the DSP which I'll show you how to do or in our AuroraNet software. There's a couple different ways that you can deploy this system. In this case what we're doing is we have our audio signal coming into the sub and then we can either choose to use crossover out or just uh, pass through out to, to pass this signal to multiple subs. In this case, we're going to go crossover out. So we can set our crossover frequency on the sub and then by engaging the crossover out on the output here, it's now sending the high pass filter version to the Ingenia. So our low pass is handled here by us choosing our, our crossover frequency and by choosing crossover out, then the high pass of that crossover is now going to our Ingenia. And then as far as Ingenia goes, so we're going crossover out, so it's a high pass uh, signal going into this Ingenia. And that's our input. And then you just link one Ingenia to the other with the audio cable with just analog XLR power we can power this all off of one circuit here so I'm going you know power con true link out of the sub into the first Ingenia and then link out of this first Ingenia into the second one now I'm going to show you how to set up the Ingenia system when you have two paired together so they act as one column so it's quite simple there's a infrared transmitter receiver on each of these handles so this way when I click build here so build system and it's going to do a quick infrared scan and the next step is it does the scan and it knows that there's two speakers there. So it now knows that there's a second Ingenia here. So anything I do here in the DSP gets applied here. 
Also, the top screen will flip upside down so it knows that it's upside down so you can see the, the parameters changed. Um, if I wanted to do any sort of sub alignment or frequency alignment, you know, time-wise or frequency-wise, I could, I could apply that here in this section, but in this case, I'm gonna skip it because essentially we are going directly crossover out of the sub into here, so I don't really need to worry about that right now. And you would want to tell it if you're stacking it or flying it because it might suggest a way to steer the high frequency section. In this case, we'll just leave that as is. And if I wanted to steer the high frequency section upwards or downwards by 10 degrees, I would just click enter and then that's how you steer it. In this case, we'll leave it at zero. So we're not going to steer it. And that's pretty much it. Get this back to zero. And you have your level control right here as well. So if I was to turn that down, that's that's basically turning down the, the signal coming in here. And then you also have access to a three band EQ as well as delay. So if I go to system delay, I have more delay than you'd probably ever need. It's upwards of 150 milliseconds. I can't remember exactly what it is, but so far I've not run into a scenario where I needed more, more delay than what's on board here. I'm going to show the new AuroraNet software and how you can use it for different applications. First in this example here, we have a VO system where we have 12 VO L208s over six S118 subs. I also have an additional sub online so I can show you some features in the AuroraNet software. And we also have the AC26, which is now supported in AuroraNet. One of my favorite features of this is the fact that you have a signal flow diagram. So now you have a full view of what the AC26 can do. So you have your input compression, input EQ, input level, delays, uh, polarity, muting, you can, you can link all of those two you can link those two inputs together and then you could feed them to any of your outputs you have six outputs and you can determine um, you know which of those input sources those outputs are receiving and then you also have additional EQ on each output so we have our six outputs here so you have EQ there you also have input EQ so I can add an input uh, EQ filter there or I could also add some EQ filters on my output and on top of all that you have crossovers and high pass filters and low pass filters. So you can do total system alignment with, with an AC26. So if I wanted to send my subs, you know, a separate signal from the tops, I can do all my alignment here. I can choose to look at input metering and I'm able to see my AC26 is getting signal, but my sub is not. The gray units are offline. So I, that, that explains why I'm not getting any signal there. Um, a very cool useful feature is the fact that you can build your system completely offline and then once you get on site you can merge the offline units to the online units. So you can uh, choose different options that you want to view on a global status. So you can look at input level, we can look at output metering. So these are my six outputs on the AC26. I can see that we're not getting any signal on the outputs and that's because I actually have it muted. See, I can see all the outputs are muted there. Um, we can also look at you know name, so I know exactly what's what. I can see these are all VOL 208s. These are my S 118s. Here's my AC 26. You can also look at the temperature. So this is very useful for like outdoor festivals where the temperature it's a it's a you know. It's very hot outside, so if you wanted to monitor the temperature of your system, you can look at it as a, you know, a cold to hot ratio as far as the gauge goes, or you could actually see the actual power supply temperature of the unit when you just double click on the box. Another cool feature is firmware. So if these were all online, I can see what firmware versions they have. So it's very easy to get a global view of, of your system to make sure all your firmware is matching. And then we also have the ability to mute and solo different frames. And if you're in, if you're doing a show, then you might actually put it in show mode, so you cannot actually accidentally mute or solo something. 
So one thing that I'm going to show you real quick is how to do uh, your, your, your crossover point alignments. So let's say that I wanted to choose my crossover points between the tops and the subs. So I can very easily do that by choosing all of my VOL 208s here and choosing the inspector down here. And if I change my high pass frequency here to, let's say we want to do 90 hertz. If I did the same for over here, now all of my L208s have a high pass filter at 90 hertz. So then I would do the same for my subs. So if I choose all my subs, I can choose my crossover frequency to be 90 hertz. And I'm choosing true link, so that way the output of one sub is passing the unprocessed signal to the next sub, hence me using the true link. And now I've set my crossover point between the tops and the subs at 90 hertz. A couple other cool features is we have the, the cardioid function. So if you go to the preset tab on the subs, if I enable this, on the rear facing sub, now my alignment is done. So the, the time aspect, the polarity, and the level is all done for you just by engaging the cardioid option on the rear facing sub. Uh, you could also group everything together, so I can even do auto grouping. So it knows that there's different models here, so if I just check yes, then it's going to automatically group my S118s and my L208s to two different groups. So now I've grouped my entire system, so I have a full view of my tops and subs, so I can easily mute my mains, I can easily mute my tops, I can easily mute my, my subs, and I can easily look at my, my, my signal coming into my mains, I can easily add delay down here, and then of course you can do your group, group EQ, so you can, you, know, you can tune the entire PA through your groups. So you just add a bunch of filters and EQ away. So that's a roar net, there's a lot more. Um, this is just kind of the basis of it, and I'm sure we'll make some more videos soon.